Hey everyone, so this isn't very scripted, but I'm going to be going over the descriptions that we got for the Season 21 artifact. Uh, I think it looks actually pretty good. So, Column 1 is the boring one, and the one that kind of hope that we move away from, in the sense of having it be a thing you have to select, and having it that just be purely passive. These are the weapons that will be able to hit champions every season, but for right now, this is Column 1. We have anti barrier Auto Rifle. Unstoppable Hand Cannon, Overload Scout Rifle, Overload Trace Rifle, and Unstoppable Glaive. So, I think Anti-Barrier Auto will be pretty good. I'm kind of surprised that we still don't have Anti-Barrier Auto and SMG, because at this point we should just combine them. With Anti-Barrier Auto Rifle, we have Sweet Business getting the weapon tuning, and I think that will be a pretty interesting choice going forward for Anti-Barrier purposes. And then we just have a lot of really good autos right now. Um... For hand cannon, I think unstoppable hand cannon is just in general kind of boring and kind of not great. But with the fact that we have unstoppable hand cannon, any legendary is going to be pretty good. Lumina could be in a pretty good spot because you'll be able to hit champions and then also buff your teammates. Overload scout rifle. I'm curious to see how symmetry works for that. Uh, Polaris lance is still really good. And then we have... A few decent like scout rifle options and then we also have if you get nameless midnight with kinetic trimmers that's pretty good coverage as well i don't like overload scout rifle though for this because typically especially with like fallen overload is one of the more annoying ones to hit because they're usually moving around a lot teleporting or throwing out effects a bunch so it's going to be kind of eh. but to cover that we have overload trace rifle trace rifles are in a good spot right now uh, we have the Void one from the Season of the Haunted. I'm blanking on the name right now, but that's a really good one. It's been good last season in Season 20. It's going to be a pretty solid choice going forward. We have the Raid one uh, from Rooted Nightmares. You have Reconstruction to keep it loaded up. You have Incandescent, and I think that'll be a pretty solid choice. It has Frenzy on there as well. And then we also have the one from Season of the Seraph, where it's the Arc one. You can get uh, volt shot on there and you can get shoot the loot so good coverage unstoppable glaive never been a big fan of glaives for anything but especially not for unstoppables but we'll see how it goes next up we have what i think is another kind of boring do nothing column because it's just dedicated to this this would be another one i would be fine with it being moved to a more passive stance of like hey these are your elements they are going to be the ones that work for the purposes of element but right now we have arc void and strand for the authorization mods uh, that's just going to be your siphons your surges your holsters your loaders all that stuff and then we also have the melee mods is another authorized one those are just going to be reduced down to one cost pretty simple i think it's just going to be kind of a simple move your grenade stuff over to melee and then you cover the other part if you want to. So if you want to have heavy handed as one, and then you were still using firepower, that's just going to be three costs now. So pretty straightforward. And then we also have Technicolor Siphon, another one I'm not super wild about, but it just makes a singular uh, mod that costs three, and it will cover the siphon part for arc and strand. I don't think that's great because you're you could just do two perks that cost one and then do your heavy finder, your special finder, and then keep that instead. So it's going to be niche and it's just not one that super excites me. But now we have column three and I think that's going to be way more exciting. So for the first part of column three, we have improved unraveling. That just increases the amount of damage dealt by unraveling a target. I think it's going to be really good for strand warlocks because you have the swarm reboots. And that makes it where your Threadlings constantly unravel targets. There's another perk we're going to cover in the future. That's also just going to be a good synergy there. But I think this one's a pretty nice, good, solid perk that we're getting on the artifact. Next, we have the Origin Trait one, which is Deeper Origins. Greatly improved the benefits provided by Unsated Hunger, Now Tech Tracer Rockets, Harmonic Resonance, and Noble Deeds. Um, those are just going to be what I think is going to be the perk origin-wise for... Season of the Deep, uh, that's your Neomuna weapons, that's your 
Rude Nightmare weapons and the Season of Defiant weapons. Not crazy about this perk in general. I don't really utilize it. But if there's, depending on how it works with Nanotech Tracer Rockets and Harmonic Resonance, I think it could be good if it increases the damage from Harmonic Resonance, depending on how much. That's pretty nice. Um, if it increases the, na the damage that the Nanotech Tracer Rockets do, that's pretty good too. But we'll see. Unto the Breach. The feeding of Void Debuff target creates a Void Breach while your Void subclass is equipped. So this one's kind of niche because, to me, it kind we kind of already have decent enough coverage with that. It's going to be better for Warlocks than it's going to be for Titans or Hunters because uh, this just allows you to apply any Void Debuff to create a Void Breach, whereas I think that just being that you're able to defeat a volatile target and make a Void Breach from that is already good enough coverage, at least for the purposes of, again, Gear Falcon, Hunters, and then Sentinel Titans. Sentinel Titans have the benefit of just being able to use any of their abilities, make a target volatile, you create a Void Breach. And then Gear Falcon Hunters, you go invisible, you come back out, you have volatile rounds, you can just make anything volatile, make a Void Breach. So again, it's going to help more so with Warlocks, with their limit of volatile abilities, than it's going to help anything else. Next we have Electric Armor. Stay amplified longer while your Arc subclass is whipped. This is good because there's some stuff later on, like the next perk, and then there's like other attributes that it could be good for, but I'm not wild about this one. I think it really just depends on what you're building towards, and I think it's one of the ones you can just kind of swap out. Thunderous Retort. Grant bonus Arc Super Damage if cast while critically wounded or while amplified. Lasts until the end of the Super Activation. So this one is kind of eh. I don't know how it impacts for the activation of things like Gathering Storm and doing the damage throughout the whole thing or with Thunder Crash. It says until the activation. So is that impact of the actual Thunder Crash effect? This is multiple things where it's fine, but it's not great unless you're going for a particular build. Column 4 is more interesting. Uh, we have Strand Soldier. Your Strand weapons gain a rambling round whenever you gain Woven Mail while your Strand subclass is equipped. That's going to be super good for Titans because they have the ability to just constantly have Woven Mail up. Titans have the ability to, like all the other Strand classes, pick up orbs, get Woven Mail, boom, you're good. But then they also get Break a Tangle. That gives you Woven Mail if you're standing at low pulse, so you're just constantly having Woven Mail up. Uh, then you have the Boots, the Abeyant Leaps. Those just let you also get Woven Mail from suspending a target. So Titans are going to have it pretty easy, but realistically, this is just a nice free, hey, you can have Unraveling Rounds as long as you're defeating targets consistently and you have a Siphon or some kind of orb generation going on. Uh, we have Overcharge Armory, Weapons with Unsated Hunger, Nanotech Tracer Rockets, Harmonic Resonance, and Noble Deed Traits are always Overcharge Weapons for you when you have that modifier active. I think this is a mid one. It's very niche. I don't like using this personally just because when overcharge is active, usually you're doing content with champions involved. And so I'm not just using the weapons just for the boost. It doesn't stack. There's already surges provided. And whenever there's overcharge provided for that, there's usually particular weapons. So I just kind of like not wild about it because it's very rare that I'll use a weapon just because it has those perks as an origin trait. As opposed to, it hits this champion. Maybe it's this element. Or maybe it's like this, For in the case of like Arm Sealer, I will use a rocket because rockets do more damage there and they're threshers. So this is a very niche, meh perk. I kind of hope we move away from this one. But we'll see what happens. Next we have Protect the Breach. Picking up a Void Breach grants you an overshield or refreshes your existing timer. So... Again, going back to Titans on this one, I think that Titans have a pretty nice one here because with the offensive bulwark aspect, you are getting increased grenade recharge time from having an overshield applied. You have uncontrolled demolition to constantly make targets volatile and then therefore get an overshield and then have increased grenades and then it would let you constantly make targets volatile, which constantly lets you make void breaches. So that's just pretty nice little flow there. Gear Falcon Hunters also will have free overshields. Not as important because you can be invisible. You can get your own overshields again as well, but it's just a nice free benefit. 
works out well for the Warlocks as well in the sense that, like, if you're using that previous perk from Column 3, then you're benefiting and being able to get an overshield from those breaches. And Warlocks don't have a lot of ways to get Void Overshield right now. But I think this is going to be niche, but it's pretty solid. We have Counter Charge, which is just gain a stack of Armor Charge whenever used on a champion. That's nice, and it's good for whenever you're doing activities with champions. Just free Armor Charge. Amped up is new. Gain damage resistance while amplified. Depending on how much resistance you get and the uptime on amplified, then you're fine. This is like a pretty nice one. It's pretty easy, pretty simple. Uh, benefits as well from the previous one, the electric armor, where you have longer amplified, so therefore you have longer damage resistance. I'm curious also if it stacks with like the arc one that you get, the arc fragment, where you, when you surround it, you get damage resistance. So depending on how much you can stack it up with, this could be a pretty nice one, but it's niche. Next is column five. Um, this is one where we only really get to pick two perks, and that's kind of like the annoying part about the current system. It's understandable because usually these are the really strong ones, but it's also kind of annoying because sometimes these are the ones you want to play around with more in different combinations. But first we have Conductive Cosmic Needle. Targets affected by strand debuffs take increased damage from arc and void abilities. Depending on how this one works in the sense of debuffs, because I don't know if it's going to be counted as a debuff where it doesn't stack with other debuffs. So like if you can do, for instance, tether and then have the target unraveled and then other people's arc abilities and void abilities are benefiting from that damage boost, great, awesome. This is a pretty nice good team play perk. But if it's just like, oh, your own arc and void abilities are doing more, then it's like, eh? Or if it doesn't stack, then it's like, okay, well, it's just my abilities taking that benefit. It's niche. So I'm curious to see how it works in synergy with things and see what like interactions we get with it. Shock and awe. Arc frontal blows while you are amplified, summon a burst of lightning that damages and jolts targets. I'm curious to see if this one has a cooldown because there's just so many like nice arc effects and like arc damage going out that I think this is one's just going to be crazy. Uh, it works with abilities and weapons, great. And I'm just very, very excited to play around with this perk. Uh, Supernova. Picking up a void breach causes your next source of void damage to create a large weakening pulse. I think again, this one's gonna be pretty nice to play with when you're on a void build. Going back to that same little well of information, um, Sentinel, Titans, Gear Falcon Hunters, and then if you're using that perk uh, on the Warlock, this could be just great. Uh, it's any void damage source, so that's weapons and per abilities again, so that's going to be nuts. And depending on also if it, you can like kind of stack it, I imagine it's going to be one and done, regardless of if you pick up two void breaches, you don't get two charges of your next void damage doing anything, but... That's pretty good, and I'm also curious if this also has a cooldown on how it activates, but it's going to be pretty nice. Uh, we have another new one, Squaggles. This was kind of crazy. Performing a finisher while you're amplified grants amplified to nearby allies when your arc subclass is equipped. Performing a finisher when you have woven mail grants woven mail to nearby allies when you have your strand subclass equipped. Performing a finisher while you have devour grants devour to nearby allies when your void subclass is equipped. That's crazy because I'm just thinking about all the different situations in which you have like whether it's a well basically anybody on void and they're granting devour to somebody else then you have maybe a titan for instance who can constantly have woven mail up themselves they finish and they grant the whole team woven mail so then you have everybody with woven mail and devour and then you have amplified so Depending on the different combinations you do and like how it works, especially if people who aren't on a void subclass can just constantly keep the power proc and active from their own kills, that's gonna be crazy. Like grenades are gonna be crazy this season from just that synergy alone. But it's gonna be great. Um, then we have the last one. This is a returning one. Lightning strikes twice after throwing an arc grenade, gain increased grenade recharge for a short time. Arc final blows extend the duration of this benefit. This one feels like it should be moved to like a column four. Uh, with the, again the fact that you can only get two of the perks from this last one. 
it's not doing enough to promote me to pick it over any of the other ones. Um, I think it's going to be interesting. If you're going for a strict like arc build, cool. It's fine. But if you are just... you could, I feel like there's other synergies you can get from things in the current artifact pool where this is the one I'm going to pick out of anything else. But yeah, so those are our artifact perks. I'm pretty excited for the artifact. I think we have some interesting perks, some interesting combinations, and I'm interested to play around with it. Thanks for listening to me. I know I'm not super prominent on this, but I hope this was helpful and I gave some nice insights. The rest of this is just me finishing this weapon level farming I was doing on Devil's Lair. Have a good day, everybody.